Welcome to our MathShed webinar. I'll just wait for a few minutes for everybody to join. Great, I hope you've had a good day. Um, what I will be sharing with you today is MathShed and different features that we've got to help pupils lost learning that may have happened in the pandemic or just any general consolidation that they might need. My colleague Alex is also on this Zoom, although he's just in the background, and he'll be here if you've got any questions. So as what I'll do in a moment is I'll share my screen, um, and as I'm doing that, if you've got any questions, if you use the Q&A button at the bottom of Zoom here, then Alex will be able to answer any questions that you've got as I go through so that I don't need to do both at the same time. Um, it should be about half an hour today. I'll also record it and send it out to any participants so you can share it with any staff members who also might find it helpful. OK, what I'll do now then is share my screen. and then go from there. Okay, right, I'm gonna disappear for a moment. Okay. okay, so for those who haven't used EdShed before, this is what the teacher hub looks like. Now with MathShed, you can get a 30 day free trial if you are in a school or if you are a teacher. You can also get a two week free trial if you are a parent. And with a free trial, you'll get access to all the features. You're just limited in the lesson PowerPoints that you can access. But I'll show you as I go through those, they're really clearly indicated with um, the free symbol near them. So you'll be able to see which ones that you can access on a free trial. If you'd like to start a free trial, you just simply go to edshed.com, create an account, um, and then once you've verified your email, you can log in and start a free trial. They completely end after 30 days, so we don't take payment or anything like that. So it's just another thing you don't need to worry about. So this is what uh, the homepage looks like. Now, um, I am an admin here, so I have a few just extra buttons on my screen, such as this bottom part of the menu on the left. What I will do first of all is show you our maths resources and how you find those. So you can either access them from the menu on the left there or also this big green button here. So if I click there, as this is my account, I have access to all of the sheds. But if we go to Math Shed, and you can see that we have got lessons here from reception to year six. Now our scheme follows the white rose curriculum um, and we also have a few end of block assessments and end of term assessments to go with those as well. So if I click into stage two, now stages are the same as year groups, we call them stages so that from a child's point of view if we give them work that's not their year group they're less likely to know. So then we've got our terms, if I'm just going to click in autumn term, um, so in stage two autumn term, we have this, we've got our different blocks there, and we also have something called our recovery curriculum and quick maths. Now, if I start these two first, so quick maths, these PowerPoint slides look like this. And as I mentioned before, anything free is what you can access in your free trial. So if I click these, quick maths are really good PowerPoints, a really nice easy PowerPoints that you can have maybe first thing in the morning when the children come in or any of those little time fillery gaps that you might need. They're just really quick mental arithmetic questions. And if I click on one, you can see what it looks like. And then the next slide also has the answers. So you don't have to figure those out. So we've got these for each year group for each term. So they're simply there for you to use. Um, they cover lots of different topics. Um, and will get steadily, progressively trickier throughout the year. So they follow what the child would have learnt. 
So those are our quick maths PowerPoints. Now, the other thing that you would have noticed was our um, recovery curriculum. So if I click there, now this is something that we put together amidst the pandemic um, and just will help any lost learning that pupils um, have got. And what it does is it's a group of our lessons and it revisits the previous year group before introducing the new idea. So if they have gaps in their learning, it'll help to either plug those gaps or just give them a bit of a boost in confidence before trying something new. So I'll just show you what that looks like if I click on this year two one. And these are all free. So if after today you would like to access them, you can get them today if you would like to. So if we go to week one, day one, you can see here, so this was a year two one that I clicked on, but you can see that it's got our year one lesson for place value within 20. And this is what our math shared PowerPoints look like. I'll also show you the sort of normal standard lessons too. So we've got lots of different representations um, of number and we use these throughout. All of our lessons follow a, the same structure. So we've got starter. There are things that you can see here, which is talking time. So from that is sort of teacher explanation time, if you like, and you can see that goes on. And then there are activities. So these would be something that you can print out if you would like to, and the children can do them independently um, or in groups. But it goes through, there's roughly about, depending on the year group, four activities per lesson. And then it always ends with an evaluation. So a type of plenary that will build on the learning from the lesson, such as that. Such may, might be a statement that they've got to prove or disprove or something that they agree with or um, often mistakes that they spot and they've got to explain what's happened and you've also got the success criteria there so that is from our recovery lesson so it's year two and this day one is obviously from year one as I pointed out if I go back to if I go to year two and day two this is again building on previous learning and then later on in the week, it will include those year two objectives. So if you would like to, after this, have a little look at those, they'll be really handy to plug any of the gaps that pupils in your class will inevitably have. OK, so that's our recovery curriculum. And quick math slides. So if just day to day, day to day teaching, if I just go into a block, so if we go to block one, place value, and then it goes all of our different lessons. If I just click lesson one. Now within the lesson, you've got three different things within this sort of lesson folder. You have got lessons, question sets, and resources. Resources are our PowerPoints, and that will look very similar to our curriculum one. Now it will give teaching slides and activity slips. The teaching slides, I'll just play you one and show you what those are. And then the activity slips are the PDFs. So again, it follows the same structure that we were talking about before. I'll play it from the beginning so you can have, just have a quick look at the beginning of it. Um, so there are lots of different activities that you can do with a class whilst you're explaining, things that you can discuss and do as a class together in different activities. So count and write the number of boats in the dock. And then it says activity one. Now what the activity printable slips are, are just the activity slides like these that you can then print out. You could do them as stickers and stick them in people's books. Um, you might want to, if you do have digital devices, I used to screenshot things like this and put them on Seesaw for people to annotate, anything like that. But that's what the activity slips are. And it will also have the answers as well, just to make your life a little bit easier. But we do try and model the uh, things in lots of different ways. They see them in lots of different representations and mathematical equipment that you might have in class and can also use and get out to aid with their learning. Oh, right, okay, if I go back and share 
the website again. So those are our teaching slides. Now, the other two things that you get within a lesson folder, we've got question sets. Now, a question set is just a quiz that will go with what's been taught. So say you've taught this lesson and you'd like to set the quiz that goes with it. This is where you can just view the quiz. I'll show you how to set that as work for the pupils in a moment. But if I click on here, we've then got our quiz. Oh, it's popped me out. Now you might want to set these for homework. You might want to set it as um, an activity within the lesson. It's up to you. If they don't have devices for any reason, you can also generate this as a worksheet and print it out as a PDF. So we can see our quizzes down here. If I click play quiz, so you can see what this will look like from a pupil's point of view. Oh, it's logged me out one moment. We're in year two. Autumn, block one. Lesson one, that was the one. There we go. Right, so this is what the quiz looks like. Um, so as a pupil, you can, this is what it will appear like to the child. So if I click start game, We've got lots of different question types. So this is one of the matching, matching the numbers to their worded form, which you can do. And this is what it will look like. And it'll tell you straight away whether you've got it correct or not. And again, it uses those pictorial representations of the different numbers. So what number's being shown below. And you can tick some of them are, questions where you tick, some of them you have to enter a certain number and so on. I'll just click go so you can see what it looks like if you get it wrong. So that's what a quiz will look like. And you can see at the corner what your score is. If you get quite a few right in a row, you'll get lots of ticks that appear here. That red flag is just there if you need to report a question for any reason, maybe it's just not showing correctly. So those are our quizzes, which go with our lessons. So the final thing here is something called a lesson. Now, it's not a lesson as such, it's what you'd use as a teacher. This is what we created when um, remote learning happened. So what they are, they are a mix of teacher explanation videos and quizzes that we've taken from our question sets. So I'll show you what those look like. They also have my face on. So what it is, is it's basically a playlist that we've created as a lesson. These are also really good to use for interventions. And it also means that because all of the content, our content is there, if children need to be taken out by another teacher in a group, you know that they're going to get exactly what they need from that lesson to be able to understand the learning objective. So I'll just show you briefly what they look like. There's, so this is from a pupil's point of view. So if I click play, there I am. Hello, and today we're gonna learn how to count objects to 100. For this data, which one doesn't belong here? Have a look at the cubes, the cards, the fingers and the counters, pause here. So it gives you a little video to watch in a small chunk. So you can see that one's 30 seconds. And then if I click next, I've completed that part of my lesson. So I can go to activity one. So activity one will explain in this video what I need to do. So it will give you the teacher talking time. Next, we need to count and write the number of boats in the dock and so on. So once I've listened to that explanation, I understand what it's asking me to do then it will take me to activity one. So it says what I need to do, and you can respond by either printing it off or uploading an image or save a screen grab. And then if I go back to my next part of the lesson, we've got an explainer video and a quiz. So I'll just skip that at the moment. And then it's taken me straight from that explainer video. So say I've watched that video, it's taken me now to part of a quiz 
that builds on what's been explained in the short video. So then the child can use everything that they have just learned by those little practices and finish all these different questions. I just click some random answers so we can go through. And that will take them and so on. And you can see that as I go through each part of the lesson, the next part unlocks. So you can see it like that. So that's what a lesson is. So yeah, they're really, really handy for remote learning, but also interventions. Okay. So those are our resources and where you find them within MathShed. Now, there are other parts of EdShed which are really useful. I'm going to just visit a group page for briefly. Now, this is how once you've set up MathShed, you can organize your pupils into groups. They can be in classes, they can be in maths groups, table groups, they can be in as, as many different groups as you would like them to, but it gives you a really great way to see all the pupils. The orange here is MathShed, so it shows sort of the gameplay, so you can see how much your class is using it. You can see all the children underneath. You can see their score. Now, the Math Shed score we've designed specifically so that it focuses in the score in the last seven days. So it kind of gives you a really good quick snapshot of who's using this at the moment. You can also see total scores as well. Um, and then you can see a few extra bits of data on this page for pupils in your class. So assignments, I'll talk to you after this. And that's what we call in EdShed, any work that we've given to pupils. That's called an assignment. So if I go to MathShed data, it also can give you things like a competence graph. So here are our fluency activities. So different mental arithmetic type things that pupils need to know, so key skills. If I click on bonds to 10, for instance, that shows an average of all the pupils in this group and how they're doing. Now, this is my test account. So for certain purposes, I've had to go do questions wrong. So it looks like I'm not really making much progress in this group here. But that will give just a really nice quick snapshot indicator of how the pupils in this group are doing. There's something else which is also fairly new called a competence tracker. And this shows different parts of the curriculum and how pupils are getting on. So I'll show you this really briefly. This is something that we are working on at the moment and making it a bit more polished. So if I go to maths, so that's what we're looking at today, and then year two, and then number and place value, which is what we've been looking at, you can then see the different objectives within <clears throat> that curriculum area, the different pupils on the side of them, and then we've got a number that's been generated and it's been colour coded. So what this number shows is my average score within the last five gameplays. The way this number is generated is each of our quizzes, each of our quiz questions has been tagged with a curriculum area. So depending on how I've scored on that quiz question and how many times I've covered this objective will generate this part, this data here, this number. And what it will do is colour code it. So it will go green once they're fully competent and have covered this objective enough time. We say the most recent five gameplays just so it's not a one off and we know that the child is really secure in that area. So that's just a really nice visual way to be able to just see how your pupils are getting on. Now, if I go back to EdShed, so that was in our groups page there. Now, the next bit, which is really popular part of why people pick EdShed is the ability to set work to pupils so that they can access it on their login. And this is called an assignment. So I'm going to click that there. Now here, you can see some assignments that I have set already. Now the way to set an assignment is click create, and then you must click single assignment in MathShed you can only set single assignments. So I'll click that, and then you can give whatever work you're setting a title. Um, I'm gonna click, I'm gonna call it test assignment quiz, and we can set one of the quizzes. Then you can pick when you want it to appear for the pupils. So you can set it in the future if you like, if you're being organized and you want to set it for tomorrow, you can. 
and then click next. And then it will give you your assignment type. Now it completely depends what subscriptions you've got here because I've got all the different sheds. I can see lots of different options. But what I am going to click is our math shed quiz. So say I've taught one of those PowerPoints and now I want to set the quiz, the corresponding quiz for pupils to complete as homework. So I'm gonna click in there and then click my year group. Let's just go for another one so that we can see other things. And also you can notice here, here's where you can see our assessments. So we've got end of term assessments as well as if I click into a block, let's click into another one, you can see the end of block assessments here. These appear as the same quiz um, format. I'll click on one so that we can have a look at it in a moment. Then what it will say is game options. Now in an assessment, this is not really relevant. But if it was a normal quiz, what this does is if I click limit options, this will hide the rest of the games within MathShed so that the pupils are really restricted to just doing the games that you have set for them to play, whether that's a quiz or a lesson or a fluency task, which I'll show you in a moment. You can say, that they're limited until they have played this quiz two times. Again, it's an assessment, so I wouldn't necessarily put that for this occasion. Or you can leave it blank and not have a limit, and they're just restricted to what you have set until the Royal B is achieved. And what that means is until they've scored the highest possible score on this assignment. So they have different statuses they're called assignment statuses and they're sort of their picture changes I'll show you what that looks that looks like now and um, so that's what you can do there if you would like to and if it suits your pupils so once you've chosen your quiz and you're sure on those things then you need to choose the pupils you're going to set it for and this is where the groups come in really handy so you can set it for um, certain pupils within your class then I'm going to click next and here also you can add teachers so maybe if you've got um, a teaching assistant or maybe you're a job share and there's another teacher that will need to be able to see if the pupils have done their homework or not or their quiz because again you can set it in class if you'd like to and then we'll click close and then it comes up here so if I click on this assignment that I set earlier and played as a pupil this is what the assignment statuses are and you can see that this one because it's been played they've got some points and they've gone up so I can see that this pupil's played twice they're now at drone level you can see the different levels down here and the points that they need to get royal b is the highest one there you can also see the difficulty they've played at so it's the hardest it's got three different types of difficulty and the percentage that they have got correct there. So what I'll do next is also assign. So we've got quiz. I'll show you our other two types of assignment you can do for MathShed. I will show you next our lesson. Again, just choose your dates. I'll kind of skip through these ones. So Math Shed Lesson, you click here, find the relevant lesson that it was. I'll just click on the one that we did, click select. Again, you can choose to limit the options to, so they just see this if you want to. Choose your pupils. And then add any other teachers who can view it if you want, if that's appropriate. So the final assignment type, which we haven't touched on just yet, is a fluency assignment type. And these are all the key mental math skills that we really try and plug all the time and children need to know on quick recall, like number bonds, times tables, and all of those things. So if we go to single assignment and click, so call it fluency. So we know what we're looking at. And again, I'll skip through these bits. Okay, so here, math shed fluency there is. So you've got different question types that you can go across the top here. So we've got number bonds. And if I scroll down, you can see we've got add, subtract, mixed, and all those different types. Times tables, 
you've got mixed multiply divide you've also got if i scroll down just the singular ones which you're most likely to start with or if pupils have got gaps in their learning you're more likely to target singular ones so you've got the choice of those you've also got the choice of multiplying by tens hundreds thousands so all of that linked to place value adding and subtracting and then here also is where you can set the year four times table simulator so if i click on that then we can also have a look at that and again you can limit the options until the required amount of games have been played or they've achieved their highest assignment status so if i click save and then select my pupils And then we've got teachers to be added if needed. So here are then all of my assignments, which I can click on and check if people have played. If they haven't, you can also click at the top and it'll sort them by whatever you'd like to, them to be sorted by. So at, in a moment, I'll show you what it all looks like from a pupil's point of view, and we can log in as a pupil and play. But the other thing that's really great here for targeting or even just seeing gaps in certain areas of pupils learning is if I click view pupil, you get taken to the pupils page and you can see different aspects more in depth. There's kind of admin -y bits like seeing what works been set for the pupil and passwords and things like that. But if I go to maths data, we can see here um, history. So games that this child has played, what level, what percentage they've got. If I click on that, it'll give me the exact questions that they answered and got wrong. If we have a look at, again, a certain question type, this will show me just for this pupil. So if they're working on a certain times table, this will be a really good way to see how this pupil has got on. I don't know if I've played much of this pupil here, but you could see on number bonds how it shows um, the different times it's been played on the different days and what they've scored. And hopefully you'd like to see a nice bit of progression there. If I go to quiz data, this will show me the answers for this pupil in quizzes. So I can see there what they've got correct. If I click view, I can see again their exact answers. So it's just a nice way to be able to drill down. Of course, you've got the curriculum grid that I've shown before, so you can use that as a quick sort of snapshot. And you can also click on the ass assignment itself and see how they're getting on. But this is quite a good way to just see specific questions that they've got right and wrong. Okay, so other extra things that you can do with MathShed is to drum up a bit more motivation, uh, you can set challenges, which are sort of competitions you can do between pupils or classes. So if I click create new challenge and go for MathShed, you can then choose how you want it to be scored, whether you just want them to use it, whether it's correct answers or points earned, and whenever you want it to end. And then you can choose a fluency game that you want this challenge to be based on. Maybe you'd like to do um, all the times tables, mixed multiplication and division. And then we'll click next. And you can choose individuals or you can choose groups. So maybe in this case, that would be really good for year fours to get ready for their times table um, test. So you can choose the year four classes, click create challenge, and then you can then click results and be able to see, and that will be all the pupils within these classes and how many games they've played on this particular fluency skill. So that's a really good way, an extra way to just get them a bit more motivated. And leagues, you can turn these on um, or you can turn them off if it's not suitable for your school. You can see top maths groups. Now, again, these are the math shed score. So it's the last seven days. So that makes it more exciting because it will continuously change. Um, and then if I scroll down, we can see our top math astronauts in our school here. And that's our math shed score from the last seven days or total score. You can also create a custom league should you want to and choose 
who you want to see in a league. Maybe you've got more than one class per year group and you want to make a league just for all the year three classes, for example. So you can also do that there. Now, what I'm going to do next is go in as a pupil. If you're in the teacher page and you would like just to have a play around, maybe you've got a free trial and you want to see what the games are like. If you click any of these yellow play game buttons, that will take you to the game screen, which looks like this. And that's what the pupils will see. I'm going to log in now as a pupil and then that's my final thing to show you today. And then we can see all the work that we have set. Okay, so this is, you can see here, I've got four assignments set for me, and I know that I've got access to the different sheds. You won't necessarily have all of these if you don't have the subscriptions. Quiz shed is free, so you will have that one. So I've got four assignments in Math Shed. So if I click View, then I can see all of these here. I can see how many times I've played them, when I need to have done it by, when they're due, and my different statuses there. So if I click on, let's go for the fluency one. So these were mix of the times tables in preparation for year four times table check. So there's a bit of an explanation there. And this is what it will look like. You can also use the keyboard. And so on. So that's what um, one of our, our fluency times table ones all look very similar to that. Now it's taken me back to inside Maths Shed. So the way you can do that, if you're not sure how I just got there, if I click main menu, I access first of all my assignments from that bit, but I can also access them from actually clicking on Maths Shed, which is what looks like that. So that was our fluency one. If I go on our lesson, and you can see this looks like, just as I gave you a bit of a preview earlier, really, it just looks like that. So if I click play, we've got the video. Next, we need to match the words to the numerals. The one. You can see the numeral five here. So then once they've watched that, then they'll be taken to their quiz. So there we go. Right, and then finally, the last one that we set was for um, an end of block assessment, I think. Here we go. So although it is an assessment and it flashes up that it states that it's an assessment, it is just shown in exactly the same way as all our other quizzes. So for those that get a little bit worried, if for assessments and things like that, it's the exact same um, format. So if they're used to doing the quizzes, it shouldn't throw them off at all. So here we go, complete the bar model, input your answer like this. And I think this was a different year group that we chose. And it will give you each thing. If I just skip ahead and just type something in. So it still does have other multiple choice questions and things like that as well. Let's try and get this one right. Um, and lots of different diagrams, um, lots of different, we've really tried to have lots of different pictorial representations, whether it's mathematical equipment, to show place value, to show number, and cover all of those really important um, learning objectives. So I think that is it for now. Um, so if you would like to go on, log on and have a free trial and have a bit of a play around, please feel free. Um, here are all the children's schools up here and honeypots. I forgot to mention are what are the currency that the pupils buy things for their avatar. So that's the main currency within EdShed. Challenges, so as we said before, and I set that little challenge for the year four groups, if I had a challenge, it would appear here with sort of a little red and then the number of challenges I've got. And that's how I would play them in there. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen there. 
So that's a real quick snapshot into all the different things that MathShed can offer to help plug those gaps and build on people's learning, but also address those different parts of learning that they've lost within our disruptive last couple of years. Um, if you've got any other questions, please feel free to email support at edshed.com. I will send this recording out and I won't keep you any longer. Have a nice evening. I hope it's been useful. Bye.